In this video, I'm going to be comparing some of my favorite web framework in Python and R, namely the PyWebIO and Streamlit in Python, and also the R Shiny package. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So today I released a video called the how to build your first simple web application in Python with PyWebIO. And it's this one. And so one of the comments suggested that I provide a pros and cons of PyWebIO with respect to Streamlit. And so while we're at it, we're going to be comparing PyWebIO, Streamlit, and also Shiny. So at the high level, you know that PyWebIO is a newcomer and it is released on the Python platform. As for Streamlit, it is in the Python ecosystem as well. And Shiny is for R. And so if you're in R, you can't go wrong with Shiny. And so the question now is between PyWebIO and Streamlit. If you're in Python, which one should you go? And the choice is not only to these two, there are several others. If you're into web development, you could also take a look at Django. And a more minimal web framework would be Flask. And there is more. I think I recall there was something called Cherry Pie as well for Python. But in my own opinion, the web framework that is very simple for data scientists or for Pythonista or Pythoneer to experiment with building an interactive web application, then I would have to say that Streamlit and PyWebIO is quite easy to learn and use. And so at a high level, Streamlit seems to have a lot more resources available. So for one thing, Streamlit comes along with this gallery. So you could browse for inspiration on some of the example applications that you could build using Streamlit. And if you go to YouTube, if you search for Streamlit or if you search for Shiny, you're going to be finding more resources as compared to PyWebIO. And that is primarily because PyWebIO has just been released. Let's say we go for Streamlit. Okay, so you're going to be seeing some of my tutorials on the Data Professor YouTube channel. And you're also going to be seeing some videos from Streamlit official channel as well. And also from Patrick of Python Engineer. He has some awesome tutorials on Streamlit. And also from Jesse, he has a lot of videos on Streamlit. As you can see here, he has quite a few, over 48 videos. And there are other YouTube channels as well, like from So You Want to Be a Data Scientist, and also from Part-Time Larry. He also built some pretty awesome financial dashboard using Streamlit. And so definitely check these two channels out. And then there's several others as well, okay? Let's search for Shiny. Let's say Shiny R or R Shiny. Okay, so you're going to see some tutorials from my own channel, Data Professor, from Jonathan Ang, Two Minute Overview, from Business Science. So definitely check that out as well. And also, Richard on Data has a video of this as well. So let's try searching for PyWebIO. Okay, so you're going to see a video from Grish Nike and also the one that I've released today on Data Professor. And you can see here that Grish has over three videos already. And it was from last week, all three videos. And I think that's just about it. I think there's only four videos on PyWebIO. And so three from Grish Nike and one from myself. And so as you can see here that the resources available from YouTube is more heavy towards Streamlit. If you could rank it, then I would rank that there's more resources on YouTube pertaining to Streamlit. And then number two would be from Shiny. And then PyWebIO currently has limited resources. And so let me know in the comments whether I should expand the playlist of PyWebIO with more tutorial videos. Okay, and so let's take a look at the documentation of the three libraries. So PyWebIO has, if you go to the documentation website, it pretty much breaks down the documentation into four major areas, which I think is a pretty good categorization or breakdown of the topics. 
So it's essentially breaking down the topics to whether you're getting input from the web browser or whether you're producing output to the web browser. And so actually they created separate sub modules of the library. So they have the pywebio.input and then underneath here, there will be several functions associated with the input. And then they also have pywebio.output. And so everything related to producing the output that you see on the web and another on the section, like for example, you could produce a downloadable link where users can click on the link and then the files could be downloadable. And then the fourth one is for deploying the application. Okay, so we're not going to take a deep dive into all of them. We're just going to breeze through some of them. So let's have a look at the input. Okay, so here you can see some of the functions that are provided from PyWebIO for taking in input data. And so you can see that you could take an in input data in the form of text, in the form of a multi line text box, in the form of a drop down selection, in the form of a checkbox, a radio button, and also you could upload files, etc. And so all of these will be expanding on the above mentioned functions. And some of them will have some examples as well, like here. Okay, so let's have a look at the output. So all of these are pertaining to the output. So in the prior tutorial video on PyWebIO, I've used some of them, like for example, put text, which will essentially output a plain text as mentioned here. I've also made use of put markdown where you could use markdown language. And also I've used the put HTML. So here you could use the HTML tag. And there are several other unique functions such as progress bar, outputting it as a table. And so I have yet to try out all of these functions because Frankly speaking, I've only made one tutorial video on PyWebIO, but so far so good. I'm seeing that the framework is not really too difficult to use. And a notable difference between PyWebIO and Streamlit and also uh, Shiny is that for PyWebIO, you could run it interactively. You could essentially go into a command line, go into a Python environment, then you could import the libraries in, and then you could type in the name of the function and then it will readily accept input from you, whereby it will generate automatically a web page. And so you could run the web application interactively from within IDLE and also from within the command line of Python. As for Streamlit, you have to save it in the form of a file, like an app.py file. And then you have to call that using Streamlit run and then app.py. So as mentioned here, PyWebIO is very flexible, whereby you could run it as a traditional application, similar to Streamlit, where you use Streamlit run app.py. And in PyWebIO, you could also run it using Python and then app.py. And the unique thing is you could also run it using the command line as I've mentioned, interactively. Just type in two lines of code and you have a web app opening up. And for Shiny, Shiny is a bit different. For Shiny, let me provide you a high level look first. So Shiny is pretty nice looking. And the great thing about the user interface of Shiny is that it's making use of this bootstrap framework. And so the focus of bootstrapping is to place emphasis on developing web page that is friendly to mobile applications, meaning that the website will be responsive to the user's device. So if you're using a mobile phone, if you're using a tablet, or if you're using a desktop, the web page will be adjusting accordingly. So our shiny under the hood is using templates from Bootswatch. Let's have a look at some of the themes here. So essentially these are some of the themes element that Shiny is using. I have to say that it looks pretty good. Let me show you an example of some web application that I have developed and we have also published about. So this is developed using R Shiny. And so you can see here that in this web application, we have this navigation bar. 
And so it's currently lacking functionality for creating a navigation bar. So I hope that maybe that's a feature that the Streamlit team could also look into. And I've also created a video on how you could create a hack around the navigation bar, but it doesn't look like a navigation bar. It's essentially just a drop down menu where you could click on the drop down menu and then go to the various section of the web page. And so I'll put that link in the video description as well. And so I love to to see Streamlit adding navigation bar into their library. And PyWeb.io is also lacking a navigation bar as well. So currently it's a blank web page where it will show various elements of the data application. So you could add a text box. You could add some input upload button. You could display text marked down. You could style it using HTML, but then currently it's also lacking a navigation bar. So if you're into navigation bar, then Shiny is the only package that provides that. Okay, so let's continue to the next part is I've already mentioned that Streamlit has a gallery, kind of like a catalog where you could go through some of the example applications that other people have developed. And the great thing is that they've categorized it into the various categories that you can see here. And Shiny also has a similar thing in their gallery. And so there are some Shiny demos and there are some of the example websites provided by the user base of RShiny. Okay, and they're also categorized according to education, finance, government sector, etc. Life sciences as well. Okay, so I have a couple of applications that I haven't yet added to this gallery. And you can see that you could develop some amazing applications using R Shiny. And it looks quite modern as well. Okay, so going into more details on the architecture of the three libraries. So as mentioned earlier on, PyWeb.io is essentially breaking down their libraries into the four major areas input, output, session, and platform. And so let's have a look at Streamlit. Let's go to the API. And so in the API, you could see that they've categorized it into various subcategories, but it's not sure which one is pertaining to input or which one is pertaining to output or which one is pertaining to the session of the web page. And so I have to say that PyWeb.io did a pretty good job in categorizing it into an easy to navigate manner, whereby if you would like anything to deal with the input, you could click on input. If you want anything to deal with output, click on output. So although it's not exactly clear which one is input output or the session of the web page, but they still do a good job in writing up and providing ample examples. So PyWeb.io is lacking ample examples on all of the function. So you can see here that some of the functions have example, but some do not. So Streamlit did a good job in providing examples for each and every of their functions. But it would have been better if they also categorize, like for example, display text, display data, or display chart, display media under a category called output. And for widgets, it could also go under inputs. And then there are other aspects as well, like for example, the layout and other areas such as containers that could also go under output as well. And if you go into the code of R Shiny, let's take a look on the web page on the first page. So the code of Shiny is essentially involving two elements, the UI and the server. So the UI is responsible for user input and also user output. So UI will be accepting input in the form of text box and also displaying the output right inside UI. So UI will be responsible for everything involving the user interface. So essentially what the user sees, the UI will be responsible for that. As for the server part, it will be responsible for the processing of input variables accepted from the user. And so what is going on under the hood, the server function will be responsible for that. And so for PyWeb.io, the server component is also contained within the code of the app.py itself. But then what is clear, as I mentioned, is the input and the output. Okay, so if I could reiterate this again, PyWeb.io 
has essentially broken down its library into the input, output, session, and platform. As for Streamlit, there are elements or functions for the input and the output, but then they're not really clear in the documentation. And so the input will have to be concerning the widgets. So whenever you see interactive widgets or add widgets to sidebar, then you know that they're pertaining to the input. So let's have a look at the cheat sheet. Maybe this provides some guidance. Okay, so it's essentially similar to the headings that we've seen, but then they've put all of the code in one page. So it would have been nice, for example, display text, display data, display chart could go under output. And then widgets could have more examples. Let's see. Okay, right here, display interactive widgets. So maybe it could say input as well. And so essentially all of these are input. Okay, so maybe just a small minor adjustment to the wording. As for Shiny, you can see that the names of the function has the name input in it. So like input, date range, input, checkbox, input, slider, input. And so because the Shiny application, I would say looks visually nice, but that also comes at a cost. So you can see here that it looks very nice. It looks like a typical modern website that you see with navigation bar that adjusts according to the resizing of the browser. As you can see that whenever I resize it to be smaller, I see this small button on the top right. If I click on it, then it expands the menu. So that will happen when this particular website is open on a mobile device. But then if it's on a desktop or a tablet, then you can see the full navigation bar. And so this comes at the cost of a bit more difficult in coding because you have to specify which panel do you want to have the particular function. Like for example, here they have the title panel, they have the sidebar layout, and underneath sidebar layout, they have sidebar panel. And then at the same level, they have sidebar panel and also the main panel. And so for a beginner, this could be quite challenging. But for Streamlit, it's very intuitive. They do have some container that you could also make use for the layout. But the options in Streamlit and also PyWeb.io is a bit less than the Shiny. But if you take a look at the layout, I think that PyWeb.io has a lot of functionality. They do have laying out the content as a grid or also to customize the row and the column layout as well and also CSS, okay? So in a nutshell, you can see that PyWeb.io, Shiny, and also Streamlit has its strength and also its slight weakness. And so there is no perfect library. And so it really depends on your own personal preference. Like for example, if you would like a web framework to have a navigation bar, then you have to go with Shiny. If you want more resources that are available to help you in your development of the web application, then you have to go with Shiny or Streamlit. If you want to have a web application that is working right inside the command line, then you have to go with PyWeb.io because that's the only library that can do so. And so let me know in the comments which of these three libraries are your favorite and also why. And also let me know which areas that I have missed. And also please do share which features of the three libraries that you like or dislike or your hack around solving the issues. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.